A very warm welcome to everyone joining us for today's webinar, be it morning if you're in London or afternoon in Moscow. Today we'll be looking at the complexities and issues involved in setting up a business and critically a bank account in the UK. It's aimed obviously at the overseas business person or investor who may have not operated in the UK before. My name's Alf Torrance, I'm the Executive Director of the RBCC, and I'm delighted to welcome Luda Beanland, founder and MD at Schoolgate Accounting, a boutique firm of chartered management accountants, helping individual clients and a range of businesses with their accounts, tax issues, as well as supporting non-residents and investors navigate UK's financial regulations. Schoolgate Accounting is a well-established practice, having been operating for over 10 years now, and is extremely well regarded. Before we get started, I'll just run through a couple of ground rules. After I've finished, Luda will make her presentation. I'm sure many of you will want to put questions to Luda afterwards, so please use the chat room function and we'll try to pick out some of the more popular themes. We'll have everyone on mute, so if you want to speak, um, please unmute yourself. And then of course, most importantly, remute yourself once you've finished. As we normally do, we'll be recording the webinar, which we'll post on the website after the event uh, with any presentational material. If you'd like to follow up any of the issues with Schoolgate, details are on the, available on the website, or of course, um, contact Luda directly. Luda, the government's promised that in the post-Brexit world, the UK will be one of the most attractive and easiest places to do business. We're very much looking forward to hearing how easy it is at the practical level to set up a business and how to avoid any pitfalls. Over to you. Yes. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank Alf and James for organizing this event and inviting us. We are very, very honored to speak at such amazing event and thank you very much. So um, just a little bit about myself before I share my screen with, my, with, with our presentation. Uh, yes, my name is Luda Binland. I'm Chartered Management Accountant and Tax Advisor. Um, uh, we, we are a small of team of 20 uh, member of staff. Uh, what we do, we deal with the companies, opening, closing, accounting, um, uh, uh, self-assessment returns, which is declaration of personal taxes, uh, tax advices. We work with immigration lawyers, and I can see wonderful names here, Yulia Gutkovich, Redford, Anna uh, Daskevich, and uh, apologies if I haven't seen it, just one, one line. Uh, so, so I'm, yeah, so uh, amazing firms who, who refer us lots of clients, appreciate it, it's lovely to see you here. Um, so we write business plans for startup innovators visas, and we help companies to grow. We try to help companies to raise capital when they need to, we advise for taxation issues and so on and so forth. So um, that's in a nutshell who we are. Okay, so let me just share a presentation. Right, so I hope everybody can see. Okay, so uh, yes, to, today I would like to uh, talk about opening business and the bank account. Uh, I mean, we have a variety of clients actually, you know, coming, they already either opened or they're thinking if they open, they've got their own structures when you start questioning how why did you open that as well you know my neighbor told me that the, 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 the best the best solution for me which some very well sometimes it's not that this, as it is so here in this session for me is just to take you through the legal structures and uh, from obviously from more accounting point of view and from more taxation point of view you you might need obviously by no means i am a lawyer uh, or corporate lawyer so if you've got any questions about you know memorandum of article association it's better to speak to lawyers we have them here juliana you know i can see you <laughs> so actually yes but generally speaking so let, let me just take you through let's start let's start right so um first one let's i would like to talk about types of the companies okay so um what are we having in the uk i know that in russia there are variety there are all war and uh, uh lots of others myself i come from kazakhstan almaty right so I'm Russian, but coming from Kazakhstan. Right, so um, first of all is limited company. Um, there are a limited company partnership sole trader. They're the most common. I'm not talking about public liability because that is for bigger companies, that's for bigger structures. So if you have any questions, obviously I can, um, I can uh, tell you about it, but the most common ones is uh, limited company. So let's just do overview and then we go through details in my presentation further down, 
Okay, so um, limited company. What is limited company? Limited company is normally limited by the number of shares you have in the company. Normally, you have hundred shares, uh, hundred shares, um, uh, thousand shares. So you normally have sort of uh, nominal nominal number of shares. If it is your own company, obviously, if you are thinking of uh, trying to raise investment, you might increase your share capital. Okay. So anyway, the responsibility sort of limited, the, the wonderful thing about company that it is limited, you've got limited liability, and it is limited by the nominal value of your shares, which is wonderful. L Luda, but, sorry, can I be very rude? Could you put your, um, uh, the display on presentational mode? It, it's it's um, not in the full screen. Uh, James, can you do that, James? Um, oh, yeah, it's just at the bottom. Uh, right hand corner next to the slider. Yeah. 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 Next. No, uh, left. No, no. Uh, the one button that, on the uh, left. Hand. Here. No, no. Ne uh, right. As you look at it. One more. One more. What? No. <laughs> this? Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. It's the one right on the right hand corner now. On the red bar. One yeah. more, over to the right. James, you you uh, direct yeah, better. So is that is that okay? On the right hand side, next to the one that looks like a book. Yeah, that. No. One more. Okay, that, that's a right. book. That's a book. One more over. One uh, one to the right. That, that yeah, one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah great. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That that's fine. All yeah. right. So let me just move. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, apologies for my technical skills. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so 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 one of them, yes. Uh, 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 let's uh, uh, limited company. That's where where we stop. So limited company. The wonderful thing about it is that you've got limited responsibility, as opposed to when we talk about sole trader. Okay. So um, you uh, what exactly? How do you pay taxation? Normally, you pay corporation tax. Currently, it is nineteen percent of your profits. And sometimes our clients confuse profits and turnover or income. So the, so. Uh, Profit is income minus uh, sales minus cost of sales. That's profit. Okay, just to remind you, I'm sure you, you know. Uh, that's 19% of your profit. That's corporation tax in the UK. Um, uh, you've got to have a registered address in the UK, and it is strongly rec uh, recommended to have a bank account. But we, we will touch up on, uh, on the bank account later. And um, uh, also, uh, you can sell your shares for gain. Okay, that's a wonderful thing. That's something you cannot do being a um, sole trader. So um, it is an asset. It is an asset to hold. And as you can imagine, the longer you, you have your company for, the, um, the sort of your asset is growing, your asset is growing. So, and which you can pass down to your children, possibly, yeah, or to sell, worst case scenario, if your children are not interested in what you're doing. Uh, my, my daughter say, mommy, if I don't want to be an accountant, she's nine years old. If I don't want to be an accountant, I just want to be an actress. So, but do you mind if I do accountancy part? Do I really have to be an accountant? It's like Sophia, you know? So, I was like, mommy, what do you do with, would you do with the company if I don't want to be an accountant? And she was like, well, I probably sell it, you know? So it is a nice thing you can actually sell, okay? So now, overview of partnership. Partnership normally in order, what is partnership? Partnership, the definition where two individuals together get together with a profit uh, realization view, okay? So basically you can't be on your own. You've got to have a partner. That's why it's partnership. And the minimum number is two, okay? So, um, uh, right, there are two types of partnership. I don't want to bore you to go into too much details. There is one traditional, the one LLP, uh, which is on the screen. So traditional, you, uh, you've got unlimited limited liability, okay? Um, but LLP, you've got uh, limited liability uh, by, by your uh, contribution into your uh, partnership, okay? So which is, which is also, so partnership, I would always call it, it's something semi, it's something half company and half uh, sole trader, okay? That's pretty much um, uh, limited liability partnership. So, um, now you you cannot sell shares here, okay? You cannot really so so it's once you've gone, you've gone. You can't really sell it as it's not really an asset to have unless obviously uh, LLP's got some assets, which is wonderful, okay? But um, uh, just your share isn't really worth uh, anything. I'm, uh, uh, and uh, yes, yeah, well, uh, uh, structure is very flexible now. 
taxation in normally being a sole trader or partnership is actually is not as good as limited as as a company and the reason for, for that you remember company pays 19 percent corporation tax partnership how it's normally partnership itself they do not pay any tax However, the, that profit which uh, partnership generate, it gets divided and allocated to, uh, to partners. And then they are like sole traders, exactly the same way they pay taxes, okay? And sole trader, they pay income tax 20, 40, 45%. They pay national insurance class uh, two, which is three, three pound to five pence a week. And they buy, pay national insurance class four, which is 9% and gets down to 2%, okay? So that is, uh, as you think about the company, company pay 19% and then there is a dividend tax, okay? Which is also, is quite quite good, 7.5%, okay? That, that it's progressive. So anyway, just overview. <clears throat> So, so um, now, if you say, Luda, you just told us all wonderful things about the company, you talk about partnership, so why on earth I would have partnership then? If you, you know, say there is some liability here, uh, more tax to pay, why, why would you do that? Well, uh, the, one of the advantage of partnership is a great flexibility. For example, in the company, as you can imagine, you've got lots of, for example, uh, uh, it's normally pa pa partnership is suitable for architects. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the examples, don't, don't, don't just take exclusively what I say, but one of the architects, firm of architects, accountants, <clears throat> okay, uh, tax advisors, uh, you know, any, any professionals, I suppose. And the reason for, for that, imagine if you have a company, you give someone shares, you want them to participate in share profit, right? You give them shares. If you've got disagreements, it's quite difficult, I'll be honest with you, to, to get rid of the person, you know, you have to persuade them to give you shares. Obviously, you, you can write it all, but generally speaking, when you engage someone, you don't think about how you disengage them, okay? Uh, so it's quite difficult, really, you know, if something happens or a person, you might have wonderful relationship, but you just want to leave, you know, it's like job, actually, I'm not enjoying it anymore, I want to go elsewhere. In the company, okay, you, you've got to, you know, you've got to sell shares, you've got, it's a lot of puffing around, however, partnership, quick and easy. <clears throat> I don't want to be guys with you any longer, and I just take my uh, capital I've introduced initially and just go, okay? So it is, it is quick and easy, okay? There is lots of flexibility, no fucking around with, sales, with selling shares. And normally big, uh, as you can imagine, corporates, say, for example, KPMG, right? They partnership, all these big four accounting firms, they've got partnership because they don't want to fuck around with, with, with shares. They just, okay, you come, you, you do the business, we like or we don't, or you, you change your mind, you don't want us to, you know, you don't want to be with us any longer and you just go. So it's quick and easy, it's flexible. That's why uh, uh, partnership is, is very popular uh, among lawyers, um, accountants, architects, tax advisors, because it's, it's easy and flexible. Right. The, the next one is sole trader. Sole trader. Uh, right. Being a sole trader, or, uh, once again, quick and easy. Okay. You, you actually, uh, once you open in a business, <clears throat> you open a business, you have to notify HMRC. Uh, in the next tax, uh, tax year, okay? So it's it's uh, actually you've got the time even, you know, um, to sort of understand what you're doing and uh, the minimum setup. You actually don't have to have anything to be um, a sole trader. And all you will need to do is to apply for, for a tax number called unique tax reference, okay? And um, so, so registration company's house is not really required, which is wonderful. And it's not deemed to be a legal entity in its own right. Okay, so um, it's not. So when you have a company, there is a, what is called corporate veil, which separates you, uh, uh, you as a shareholder of this company and the company itself, okay? So as I said, liability is really uh, on the company, okay? So obviously, um, uh, in this, in the, when you're a sole trader, the, it's unlimited liability. Well, there are, you know, sometimes, you know, clients say, well, actually, you know, I'm quite worried about unlimited liability. What can I do? And here we say, listen, um, the, one of the way around it, you just take indemnity insurance. And indemnity insurance, I would recommend, you know, to take limited company as well, okay? So, but um, with sole trader, you really must, you really must. And uh, some people say, listen, you I'm just providing, you know, services, uh, what might go wrong possibly, well, you know, it's, it's uh, on the likelihood, you remember that the grid, <clears throat> 
likelihood and impact, right? We all studied um, at university professional qualification and they always risk, associate the risk, you've got the read. And if it comes to, um, you know, very unlikely, but if it happens, its impact would be just go bust, you know, then insure it, right? So, so we know how to measure it, it's very unlikely, but if it is, you, you just you just insure it, okay? So that's indemnity insurance, okay, for sole creator, if that's the case. <clears throat> so that co completes first slide. Now, if you ask Luda, okay, thank you very much for telling me about overview, but in terms of the um, taxation, you know, taxation, because obviously considering you no know, pros and cons, purely financial, forget about limited and limited liabilities, that's fine. If you're a limited company, you know, it's separate, I'll take indemnity insurance, sole trader, I'll take indemnity insurance. And we know running the limited company is more expensive, just to let you know, and more admin uh, than sole trader. Luda, which one should I go? My first question would be always, what are your profits? estimated profits going to be okay what is okay let's think about fifty thousand pounds that's my threshold for pretty much you know if it is with profits at once to rem, once again to remind you profits is what, what it is really it's uh sales minus cost of sales that's your profits okay that's profit is are your profits going to be less than fifty thousand pounds if answer is yes that is a sole trader if it is more then uh, open up a company. And when I give such advice, I look at purely financial consideration, you know, and taxation, because uh, accountancy fees are well justified and admin involved, which you will also have to do, okay, not just us, uh, only ju justified if your uh, profits are going to be more than 50,000 pounds, okay? So, um, Right, so let's move on further. Right, so um, the last one was sole trader. So I just want to talk about sole trader and responsibilities, okay? So, um, right, so normally, ju ju just to give you a bit of heads up, what is a sole trader, what year rent you, you need to choose and so on. For normally, in the UK, uh, there is a tax year which starts 6 April of one year and it finishes 5th April of the other year. Therefore, uh, normally people call it tax year uh, 1920, so we are now with you nine, uh, 2021. It doesn't mean we are talking about two years, it's just one year. It starts in one year and falls into the other year, okay? That's why it's called tax year. So normally we advise you to keep that end, end year and coincides with, with the tax year. The reason for that, you have a choice of actually choosing something else, like a company. Company choose any year and they want, okay? So, uh, however, uh, unfortunately, um, if you choose something else, if the other year and rather than uh, 31st March or any day up to 6 April, you will be twi uh, taxed twice, okay? Don't ask me why. That's a chair mercy decided if you want different year and there would be what's called total profits, but I'm not going to bore you with that for long, just to say, Quick, you know, very simple, just keep that uh, finance, you know, that's a tax year, you know, uh, you can, you don't have to have year and um, 5th April, you can just have 31st March and HMS accept that, that's fine. So now, um, now when do you have to register? If uh, So let's, uh, that's your tax year. We are now in the tax year um, 2021, okay, and it's going to finish on the 5th April this year, okay. So if you started uh, trading in this tax year, you have to notify HMRC by 6th of October um, 2021 to file self-assessment by 31st January 2022. Okay, that's uh, following the uh, following uh, January next year. Okay, so you know some, some what's involved. I mean, when we're staying applying, you just find, you know, either we can help you or someone else, or you just Google, register for self-assessment as self-employed, okay? That's where you register. What you really require to do, you obviously, you have to keep your all your sales and all your expenditure. So uh, once you actually have to file self-assessment return and you will have to file, okay? Uh, you have all the records handy. Remember, you have to keep them for minimum of, of five years, 10 months, or all your sales and, um, uh, and uh, sales and expense and, and, rec and expenditure receipts, okay? Uh, the question how you can keep them, uh, wonderful news, you can keep them uh, electronically as well. So if you want to take a picture, 
and save it in a separate file. That's wonderful. You know, that's absolutely fine. So um, now, now this in our accountancy practice, uh, we actually um, try to not to print, you know, to, to print as less as, as as little as possible. And also we try to keep everything in, dig, uh, in digital format. Once we finish the work, we actually try to um, scan it. Uh, if we anything essential, scan it and just shred it. Okay, so we actually try not to keep because it's a space, it's a dust, you know, and um, why, you know, and it takes time to find it rather than a computer. It's, you know, you just uh, search and you find it, so it's easy. So, um, Yes, send self-assessment every year. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, you know, uh, that, uh, you, you, you have to send, once you register, you have to um, send self-assessment every year or declaration of personal taxes. Now, sometimes people ask, Luda, if I start business this year, but next year, you know, it doesn't go well or um, coronavirus, you know, and it's, it doesn't pick up, uh, can I not send... You know, uh, do I have to continue for forever now, you know, to actually um, file self-assessment returns? My answer is actually no. If you, you know, for this year, you actually have started trading, you 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 report, you know, what your profits are, if you have profits. Um, uh, however, beyond that, HMRC or HMRC, it's a tax office, right? You might the revenue customs. So if HMRC sends you what it's called notice to file, you actually can't ignore it because some clients, you know, come say after five years, oh, Chairman, I was sending me notice to file. I just ignore it because I don't have anything. I was like, well, you know that, but they don't. So you have to notify them, you know that. So so it's a simple phone call. You just phone them and cancel your notice to file. Okay, if it's, so as I said, so trade is very easy. Now, um, regarding the taxation, okay, we discussed, we just touched up a little bit on the uh, income tax. Income tax is, as we know, uh, 12,500 in the UK. Everyone enjoys that personal allowance, which is not subject to tax, okay? Anything beyond that, up to 50,000 pounds in overall, it gets taxed 20%. Then the next 100,000 or from 50,000 to 150, that's uh, 40% and beyond uh, 150, that's 45%. That's a lot of tax. Okay. So when we even, uh, that's why you remember when I said, actually, you know, if your profits are more than 50, uh, let's just incorporate the company. You know, uh, the reason I, I said that because when you start actually earning, you don't want to pay tax 40%. You don't want to pay tax 45 because that's quite expensive. Then you can start thinking of about incorporating your sole trader business into the company. Okay. So, um, and class, uh, class two, that's um, pre pretty much reserves your right for state pension. And in the UK, to get any basic state pension, you have to have minimum of 10 qualifying years up to 35 years, okay? So um, uh, when you pay class two, you basically reserve a right for that qualifying year, which go towards your state pension. Okay, and the more years obviously you have, the better your state pension is going to be. And uh, class four. Class four is, again, there is a threshold that's around 9,000 pounds, which you're not going to, um, it's 9,500 this year. So every year it's changing. So do check if you're watching this, uh, uh, you know, next year you, you, you've you got to check every year what because the rates are changing every year. So that's beyond that amount of um, uh, threshold. It's uh, 9%. Again, that threshold 50%. Beyond 50, that gets down surprisingly from 9% to 2%. But now, hmm, HMRC is very generous giving you, instead of 9%, now they're taxing, you know, if your profits are more than 50, you get stuck, uh, you know, just it goes down to 2%, and that's fantastic, but it's not fantastic. You remember income tax just suddenly increased from, from 20 to 40%. So actually, instead of paying 29%, if you take in total, right, you suddenly started paying 42%. So now you know where the figure 50,000 pounds comes from. That comes from once you start paying tax, under 42 percent uh, tax, you, you don't want that. You don't want that. It's 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 better if you incorporate the company because it's much cheaper. 19 percent corporation tax, uh, dividend tax, which we'll touch up later in, in this presentation. Right. So um, right, in the time. Okay. So yeah, you yes. So <clears throat> right. So once you move in in the UK, uh, 
you really, I mean, we, we really, you don't have to, but we really strongly recommend if you start any of the business or if you actually don't do anything, if you, if you have a right to national insurance, that number, you really have to have it. Some clients which come on investors visas in the UK say, I actually, I was like, do you have a national insurance? I was like, oh, and they lived in the UK by that in probably five years. And we're like, what's national insurance? I was like, oh, you've lived five years without national insurance. How did you manage? Because you, you can't go even even, you know, anywhere without somebody asking you uh, for national insurance, even in the local um, GP, general practitioner, that's a hospital, right? You can't like, what's your national insurance number? You just can't do anything. So, um, so yes, we, uh, you, you've got to have a national insurance number if you are a sole trader. And uh, because you remember, you will be paying national insurance class two, which uh, once you do, it will count towards, uh, will count towards your um, pension entitlement, okay? Minimum, you need to have 10 years. Okay, now um, uh, talking about VT threshold, I just want to mention it once because that will be applicable. It doesn't matter whether you're LLP or limited company, um, you're actually a uh, VT threshold, you need to know it's 85,000 uh, pounds. The once you turn over, we are talking about turnover is 85,000 pounds, you've got to register for VT. Now you might ask Luda, Okay, 85,000 pounds, like for what period and how do I know? So now what you need to know that uh, there are two types of registration for VT. One is voluntary, which pretty much I just want to register. My turnover is not 85. For example, myself, I registered, uh, when I started the company, I registered straight away because um, I remember I started um, studying the Chartered Institute of Taxation and they charged fortune. <laughs> and uh, there was an element of VT. I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I want to recover my VT back. So I've registered. Uh, the disadvantage obviously was that I have to charge extra 20% my clients. Bus businesses didn't mind, but individuals, you know, if they're price sensitive, they might say, well, actually, you're 20% more expensive than someone who's not registered for VAT. So that's voluntary. Compulsory, you look, there are two tests here. One is you look back 12 months. That's pretty much what you need to realize, not just you wait 12 months. Uh, you started, for example, last month, you just look one month back, have they reached 85? Second month, you look back to three months for up to 12 months, and then it is a rolling basis. You look back every month, 12 months back. Have I reach? If you have reach, you have to apply to register for um, VET. Um, uh, or the other one is future test. If you are lucky enough and you might say, well, I've just opened up a business and I've got massive already, you know, contract um, in, the, in the following, you know, uh, 30 days, uh, uh, it is, I'm going to start and it is on its own in the month, it's 85,000 pounds. So if you are expecting turnover in the one month, 85,000 pounds, you've got to register it uh, with the chmrc for vat pretty much straight away as if on the historic test you pretty much if you breached it let's say uh we are now what in uh, in february right in february so you have to apply uh by the end of march to be registered from first april so you have pretty much time you know to find out what you're doing your bookkeeper does plenty of time so, sort of thing uh, as with um uh future test you've got to apply straight away. That's what you need to bear in mind, okay? <clears throat> so, um, right, so now um, let's talk about, uh, we discussed some advantages and disadvantages. So just pretty much just overview what we haven't discussed. That's okay, being a sole trader, quick and easy, okay? So pretty much you start, you you don't even have to straight away notify the FHMRC. So imagine if you start doing anything now, you just have to buy 5th of October, uh, 95 F, uh, HMRC to apply for unit tax reference. Now, what happens if you don't? You even, I, I can surprise you. I mean, by no means I'm advise you, but clients do register in December, in January, suddenly, so I go, you know, wake up, oh, actually, I think I actually, you know, was doing some business. I wasn't sure whether it was hobby or business. Luda, do I need to? And it's like, okay, it's fine. So as long as you get that unique tax reference in time and you find, uh, self-assessment by 31st January uh, next year, if you start doing business this year, that's absolutely fine. Okay, that's absolutely fine. But obviously, do remember that the chairman see nowadays take time uh, to issue you a uh, unique tax reference. We registered client um, uh, in January, so we found out the is like, where is UTR, where is UTR? You know, client is really, you know, worried, like, uh, concerned. You know, said, but, okay, we, we will process this by 6 May that 6 May, okay? So, uh, and obviously uh, we, when we um, told our client, he almost fell off. 
you know, fell down. <laughs> Sorry, fell down. He was like, sick. I was like, are you not mistaken? That's six. I was like, no, I know, I know. We we we, are, we also ask each MRC just to you know to make sure it's six um, it's six May. They did say six May. So therefore, what what I'm saying, if you started or you're thinking of starting, <clears throat> just apply for unit tax reference straight away. That's my advice. Don't wait until, <clears throat> excuse me, October or January, you know, do it in the last moment, just, just apply, you know, make your life uh, stress-free sort of thing, right? Right, so, um, <clears throat> apologies. Um, uh, right, you are in the control of your business, okay? And it's your money, yes, so, okay, that's that, that's is a nice bit, okay? So, um, some people, you know, when we are all employed, we're thinking, wouldn't be nice if I just have my own business. I am boss to myself, take all the holidays in the world. I'm in control of my business, but once you actually have it, you're thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I was just employed? <laughs> you know, you've got all holidays, nobody bothers you. You know, you just, at five o'clock, you just, that is a goodbye, I'm off, you know, and you're not worried in, about anything else. So you just, <laughs> you know, so that's, uh, but that's true. You're in control, you know, in control until 12 o'clock at night. You remember that? <laughs> so, um, and, and you've got um, uh, low setup costs, low setup costs, that's true, you know, you don't have to have a penny, you know, uh, to actually uh, start up a sole trader business, okay? So now, uh, so that's advantages. Advantages, and as I said, if you are uh, comparative with employment, always, you know, all things are comparative. If you compare with employment, okay, as we touched up on employment, being a sole trader is more sort of uh, tax-wise, it's more beneficial, okay? It's more beneficial because you're actually going to pay 3% less tax, okay? Um, I'm not going through employment taxes, but it's, it's but obviously being a company is even better. But, um, so if you if you are below 50,000 pounds, so your expectation, I will get less probably first year, uh, then probably a sole trade is, is better for you, if not consider limited li uh, unlimited liability. So being, uh, right, disadvantage, disadvantage, uh, as I mentioned, just, just said, risk of unlimited liability, okay? How to close it, get indemnity insurance. Go online, do Google, Indemnity insurance, do, go to, uh, what is it, quotes, compare, right? so, so do comparison. And uh, just to, to give you an example, <clears throat> it was very interesting. We've got ourselves the indemnity insurance. We've got it with Trafagar. We've got preferential rate if you're a member of Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. So um, this year we found it was massive, you know, cost increased by a thousand pounds. Wow. Or, you know, we I don't want to pay a thousand pound more. So we, we did a Google search and I found um, uh, insurance called B. Um, so it's like, okay, who are they? What it? And they were actually quite reasonable, quite reasonable. So I came back to my insurance and I said, listen, uh, do you do price much? Because I like you, you know, I want to stay with you. Um, and they actually, surprisingly enough, straight away, they said, yes, we can do price much. And we, you know, uh, actually, so that's, uh, we, we, we don't pay with that much. So, so all I'm saying to you, how you can take sort of something from there. If you like, if you like particularly insurance, um, uh, uh, company, you know, well, I, I've heard about this one, but I'm not sure about the other ones. So what you can do, find out from your preference, preference, you know, company of your preference, uh, how much they fee, do, do research, and then come back to them saying, can you do price much? Because I, I just like you. I've heard about you more than about anyone else. So that is a just, but in the insurance, if whether you're a company or a sole trader, I, by all means, I do strongly recommend it. As I said, it comes to high impact, a likelihood, um, quite unlikely, then insure it, okay? Uh, right, as I mentioned, yes, uh, any business, if it is your own, whether it is company or sole trader, uh, involves long hours of work, okay? Sometimes it's stressful, sometimes it's stressful. The reason why it could be stressful because you are the one, you don't have a boss, as we are employed, you say, oh, oh, boss will sort it out, you know, five o'clock, I'll go home. Now it's you are the boss, you're in charge, you have to sort it out. And sometimes, you know, because we are basically seeing lots of different situations, sometimes it can be stressful, sometimes uh, there is no denial, but it's up Plus, not only to sole trader, but generally having your own business. And um, <clears throat> when you start up, yes, you perform a lot of different roles. You are a marketing manager and uh, salesperson and technical advisor and so on and so forth. So, so you are in different shoes. That's, that's uh, the advantage of that. You've got amazing experience. Amazing experience. Okay. So let's touch up on, um, talk about, okay, 34 minutes. Um, 
private company. Okay, so private limit. So that's limited company. As we said, uh, the beauty about it it's limited liability. Okay, and there is a corporate whale uh, which uh, separates the company and yourself. That's wonderful about it. Also, if your uh, profits are more than 50 grand, by all means consider registering a limited company. Okay, so now um, registering uh, a company, and I just want to quickly talk about registration process, um, you can do DIY registration. Okay, so sometimes clients ask, Luda, can I register a company myself? I say, well, it, generally, yes, though, having said that, we've got one client who said, yeah, you know, register, you know, you, you, if you want, obviously, you, 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 we can register a lawyer, you know, there is uh, Yulia there, Anna, you can, you know, go to them, they, they will register. Um, however, however uh, you know, so we had one client, you know, he was like, one's the next question, Luda, can you tell me, how, how do I fill out that? Next. Luda, how, I was like, let me just register for you. Let me just register for you. So, so um, yeah, so if you've never done it, you might want to um, delegate it to, to someone else, but it's not difficult, okay? So now, first, you need to choose the name. And whether the name is actually uh, somebody else already has taking it you need to check on company's house you will be surprised you think about it remember with my name uh with company for our name i mean no, not that it's um we we actually so yeah I, I was thinking of fidelity i was thinking of variety of names like shall we just um you know variety of names you think about a week you come up on a company's house and it's been taken it's like it took me a week to come up with the company name uh, so, um, uh, so you, you come up with something that's like, uh, I remember, I really like fidelity. I was like, so I was talking to my husband, say, he said, I really like fidelity. I was like, actually, I think it's already taken. He, 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 a company's house even might register you if you, you know, at UK or whatever thing you want. I, they might register you, but if fidelity comes, so he had a lawyer advice, he said to me, listen, they might come to you and say, you know, in a year time, uh, they will either you have to rename yourself or they, they will sue you. So I was like, oh, so we're thinking, so at the end, we just give up and call the company name after the name of the road I was living. So I, I used to live on a school gate drive. Okay, so just, was like, was like, you know, thinking about a month of, you know, either it was busy or somebody was going to sue me. I was like, just the name of the road will do. Okay, so, so that is the history behind school gate accounting. Okay, that's the name of the road. And some people say, you probably do accounting for schools, right? I was like, no, we have nothing to do with schools. <laughs> it's just the name of the road I used to. So right, register with company's house. Okay, register with company's house. That's, yeah, again, you go with company's house, register and click on button and um, company's house claim it takes 10 minutes and um, um, 13 pound, 12 pound, 12 pound cost. Normally, generally speaking, I mean, they are not saying the truth. It doesn't take 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> From, uh, so you're looking about an hour, okay? Think, you know, carefully what you're going to so It takes about an hour in. Choose director shareholders. Now, you remember partnership. You've got to have two, you've got to have two um, partnerships, okay? So how are we doing for that? Uh, two partners here, you can be just one shareholder and one director. And then all the other one things you just get from your know, memorandum of articles you buy it off shelf. Okay, that's a beauty. If you need more tailored, you need to go to lawyers. Okay, they will help you to, to do your own memorandum um, of uh, and articles of association. Obviously, you, you, you've got to choose what, what uh, you're going to do exactly. Um, there is bookkeeping. Uh, I mean, bookkeeping we, we do recommend for, for sole trader. Bookkeeping is uh, record uh, uh, record of your expenses and income. You've got to have it. Okay, so but not at the company incorporation generally speaking you, you just have to have it and once you register once you register for your company you can register straight away for corporation tax and you need to register for corporation tax if you're thinking of starting trading straight away okay and uh, what are the further requirements uh, further requirements just to heads up you have to do accounts you have to file confirmation statement and we discussed VT you have to register for VT with us in the same exactly way like a sole trader Okay, so um, these are uh, bits and pieces. Once you get into the website, you will have to have these details, okay? Without them, um, you, you will be sent this presentation and it's just um, some questions. I don't need to go through them, okay? So, but it just for you to, to let you know, if you got rather than yourself, other shareholders, you know, if you got two other or one other shareholder and you do, know, do not know many de much details about them, get them, you know, get their co copy of their passport, their address, uh, put, possibly some of these de details which are listed here well in advance. Otherwise, it will not take you only an hour. It will take you 
three hours, okay? Um, right, so um, your responsibilities, okay? Your, your responsibilities to company's house, as I mentioned, it is heads up confirmation statement. What's confirmation statement? Pretty much my name is Luda Binland. Um, yes, I've got 100 shares. A value uh, one pound if it is if it is that okay um, and uh, <clears throat> I, I will be at providing consulting services and um, uh, annual accounts you know bookkeeping whatever accounting services or auditing services so that's pretty much you've got to list it on the company's house and in case if there, if there is a change you, you know you just need to change that at that point if you start suddenly during the year for example I've got a very good friend of mine and she's our client she during the year said Luda I actually had enough of teaching children Russian. I want actually to breed the dogs. Do I need to change the company? I was like, I was like Yulia, you want to breed the dogs? You know, don't worry about creating another company. Just carry on what you're doing. But on the company's house, when corporation um, confirmation statement comes, you, you, you just uh, breed the dogs then. You know, we just say you're breeding the dogs at that point. So don't worry. Okay, so... um. You have to notify any changes um, in your personal details to company's house during the year if they are all at point of confirmation statement. However, if you appoint another director, you need to notify within 14 days to company, uh, company's house. And um, you have to uh, uh, confirm who is person with significant control. Uh, just to highlight, sometimes we see that um, there is a nominal shareholder, there is, there is a nominal director, uh, but controlling the company, someone else. Okay, uh, that's pretty much you've got to put that person as person with, with significant control. So, so, so sometimes clients say, oh, Luda, actually, I don't want, you know, uh, I don't want Svitica. <laughs> I don't want somebody else seeing me, you know, on the comes say, well, you know, um, that's one of the things. It's a great area. Speak to your lawyer, you know, but why you actually, if you are person with significant control, you've got to put your, uh, and even if you're not shareholder director. So these are the rules. Right. Then um, <clears throat> limited liability partnership. Um, as, as we mentioned, uh, you've, uh, it's, um, you've got to choose the name, um, register. You, you can either register electronically or by post. And uh, because pa partners, you remember how, how partners get tax as sole traders, exactly the same ta taxes. Okay. Yeah, partnership itself, they do not pay corporation or any taxes. So we just prepare a corporation tax return, separate profits, profits, and um, tax on profits pay uh, partners exactly the same way, the same way as sole traders. And you remember VAT is, some people say, oh, yeah, I'm sole trader. You know, VAT doesn't apply. No, it does apply. It applies to every single for, you know, form because every HMRC want you to be registered if you exceed 85,000 pounds. Check if you, you know, you need to uh, appoint auditor, you know, and uh, file accounts. As I said, it's semi, sort of half company, half sole trader. You've got to file accounts, but you do not pay corporation tax and file confirmation statement. Okay, the same of, of what I just mentioned. Right. So um, uh, with limited liability partnership, yes, you have to have a registered address the same way as a company. OK, so and it has to be UK. You, it has to be UK one. You have to choose two designated members, which basically they will be in charge for everything. Anything. And if you don't file accounts, these two designated members, they will be actually in charge for that. And normally, uh, you know, with a partnership, actually, um, you can just have agreement be between yourselves orally, but it's strongly recommended to have LLP agreement, which um, uh, lawyer, uh, lawyer can corporate lawyer can help you to draw um, to draw it in a proper way, how, how how you wish and how it's supposed to be. Okay, so and uh, yes, it has to be registered with the uh, company's house as opposed to. Um, as opposed to sole trader. Sole trader, uh, whatever you do, nobody would know. What you need to remember with LLP and company, uh, there, there would be some records, some records which uh, whoever you know wants to see, they just Google you and they will see what you have to. They might not see your turnover if you can't, you know, um, do, do abbreviated accounts. They will not see your turnover. They, um, the, uh, they might see how much you earn. They can figure out. We know corporation tax 19%. There would be 19% um, tax liability. And they would say, oh, show me just, if you know what's 19%, you can actually uh, come up with 100%. So that's easy to figure out um, if, if you know what you're doing, uh, just to let you know. But sole trader, nobody would know what you're doing, apart from yourself and the HMRC. Okay, so, um, uh, right, opening a business bank account in the UK. As you know, opening a business account nowadays is a pain in the neck. Okay, it's uh, we even notice, you know, even if you are 
uh, local resident, you've got proof of address, you are you are wonderful and amazing, all white and fluffy, as we say in Russian, okay? And uh, everything is wonderful about you. Still, nobody wants to open a bank account. You need to go, you know. Okay, first of all, nowadays, as we are in the coronavirus in January 2021, uh, the majority of high street banks, they actually closed, you know, and if you don't have a bank account with them, they even don't want to talk to you. Okay, so high street banks, okay, high street banks, that is actually, see, Lloyd's, the, why they call them a high street? Because they are just, the majority UK high street banks would have these banks on a high street. Challenge banks, they wouldn't have a branch. Okay, they wouldn't have a branch. They are just uh, uh, what's called online platforms. Okay, and that's they are. Okay, so um, right. So uh, as I said, um, uh, what's the difference be be between them? If it was me, my personal preference would be to open a bank account on the high street bank. But sometimes, you know, as I just mentioned, it's quite difficult to open it. So your first choice, quick and easy, that would be uh, online platform like Revolut, Challenger, Monda, Starling Bank, uh, Cash Plus, and there are lots of others, okay? So um, the reason why I would personally prefer High Street, first of all, I want to work in a branch. Second, uh, these banks, they existed for forever and ever and ever sort of thing, you know, up to, so, um, and you really trust them, you know, coming from um, Soviet Union, we all know, you know, like we've got this attitude, oh, I'm not sure, you know, um, you know, uh, can I trust? this bank are they going to run out with my money as if we all got that right so 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 i would trust high street bank so but however if i don't have choice i would go for online platform okay and then maybe in six months just uh, to um to transfer okay uh to to a uh, uh, high street bank uh, because i trust I just i personally i trust them all you might have different opinion that's fine okay so um now, now uh, in high street banks, there is a lot of bureaucracy. There is, uh, you know, if you've got a problem, you might to, to be on the hold for a couple of hours. I'm sure you would agree with me, right? Uh, if you are lucky, you, you, you probably in a couple of hours you speak. If you are not lucky, they just uh, cut you off altogether after two hours, which is quite annoying. Uh, however, online platforms, they seem to react quick. They, they seem to try to, you know, try to differentiate and provide better customer service. So that is an advantage of having, okay? So um, let's have a look. Let's we, we call them challenging banks, okay? And uh, some of them actually might, might not cost you uh, much. Some of them cost fortune, okay? So I'm not going particularly. You, you, we will give you the banks. We will have a presentation. We will list them, and you just do can do your own research how much they charge. So um, um, uh, and then it is your, you know. Um, risk your risk appetite and whether you are prepared to pay fees they want you to pay. Um, so um, here are the banks and we've done a little bit of research and we figure out when these banks were open, okay? And uh, probably, you know, if it was me, just my personal opinion, uh, don't, don't take me liable for anything I say here, uh, I would probably go for the first open bank, you know, the one which is the oldest one, because I will, you know, if it's been on the market for like, what, six years, right, that's probably, you can sort of, you know, trust it, but, you know, that, that would be me, but you, by all means, you know, have a look at all this, for example, I know our client from Azerbaijan just opened Cash Plus, okay, well, wonderful, quick and easy, um, uh, some clients, you know, say highly about free as money, saying listen open up a bank account with them is, is quick and easy so they're enjoying that guava pay is a new one um okay so they just open it so um yeah so you, uh, you might say listen uh revolut you know about guava pay might just because they just open they, they you know they want customers they probably likely to take me if if there is some kind of problem you know um so, so I'll, I'll leave it to you, but these are the banks and you, you can uh, do your own research on them, okay? Um, <clears throat> right, so um, uh, what do I need for the, just a quick overview? I know we are <clears throat> already passing, I'm three minutes over. So <clears throat> what, what do I need to provide? So uh, generally speaking, uh, you are going to, to, to be asked questions. Uh, one of them, if you are the only single shareholder and the only director, you can Google Kinetic, HSBC Kinetic, if you like Sakai Street Banks, and they open up bank accounts, okay? If you are the only one. So that's Kinetic, that's K-E-N-E-T, -E okay, Kinetic. Kinetic, okay? So, uh, so please do Google them and they, they do open if you are the only one. <clears throat> 
Right. So they uh, be ready. They're going to ask you in the application what service uh, you provide to your turnover. That's your sales in the next 12 months, beneficial owners, authorized identity, and be ready. They will ask you proof of address. They will want to see a document with a utility bill or uh, a bank statement, your personal bank statement, uh, dated with, with no longer than the last three months. So just to get these documents ready, okay, and uh, upload them into your PC, okay? So, uh, right. So now, in my question, Luda, what if, uh, you know, we, we are based in Russia or Kazakhstan or elsewhere, how difficult is it? And my answer, almost impossible, unless you are thinking of doing big bucks, you know, and oh, if there are banks, you know, obviously they are interested if, if you're bringing them, I think it's 10 million. Uh, the latest, you know, if you are thinking of doing 10 million or so on and so forth, they might be interested in you. Rather than that, it's impossible. So in this case, you, you might ask, Luda, what do you suggest we do then? You know, we, we really want to do business in UK. We are not ready to come, but we genuinely want, and once business established, up and running, we want to move in in UK, get proper visa. Uh, that will be Anna and Yulia there. You just come to them and... Uh, <clears throat> Um, uh, so, 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 how? Okay, okay. There are two. There is a way around it. You, you can hire a director. You can hire a director. Normally, I don't call it nominal director because I don't like a definition of nominal director. That's pretty much they pay you for just opening a bank account, which is not really right. Okay. So you hire a proper director. You hire a proper director. You uh, give them, you know, you, you have employment contract with them, you assign them, and you pretty much, you know, let them run your office, let them run your office, and that's pretty much, you know, uh, provided it is genuine, you know, not ju it's just one of the nice things once you have local resident, it doesn't have to be British, it just has to have a proper visa, not a student visa, for example, by proper apologies if there are students there. Now, all I'm telling you, long-term visa, okay, so um, either indefinitely to remain or visa allowing them to do something else check with your immigration lawyer uh, then you can actually open up bank account you just hire a proper person who will be your genuine director and um, then you can open up a, a bank account in a high street bank um, once they actually up and run <laughs> currently we notice the results all only hsbc kinetic one okay. so um <clears throat> Uh, right, so um, I finished here. Once again, my name is Luda Binland. Um, I'm Chartered Management Account Tax Advisor. If, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do let me know. Thank you very much for your time. Luda, thank you very much for a really interesting uh, talk. Um, I, I've learned lots of things and we, we've had a, a number of questions. So obviously the audience have as well. Um, I, I just, uh, I found it uh, quite funny, your, your uh, problems with naming your company and ending up by naming it on the road and uh, actually it, it rings very true because one of our members actually a big financial institution um, did a huge rebranding exercise and, and spent I'm not sure how many but you know literally in in in, in the hundreds of thousands on this big rebranding exercise and found out uh, after they'd launched that actually a very small company in St Petersburg actually had the proprietor rights to the name. So uh, they oh, ended up in all sorts of problems trying to resolve yeah. this. So, so you're absolutely right. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that. Um, uh, going to the questions, uh, we've had one from Olga um, and she asks, can the person, can a person open um, an LLC if he doesn't have a national insurance number? An uh, LLC. That's what she's put limited down. Liability, uh, limited liability, limited liability company. company That's I'm a guessing. limited company. Yes, yeah. Uh, yes, it can. As far as I know, yes, it can. So if you don't have to, but as we said, it be strongly advised. Yes, yes, you can. Okay, thank you. That's easy one. Um, uh, next question. Uh, it's on banking, and and um, uh, I know from our own experience, it's it's a, a, an area that many members have issues with, as you've. Uh, pointed out yourself there uh, and um, the question is whether uh, there are issues if there are overseas shareholders or directors not UK residents uh, and banks might refuse opening an account uh, right. what what do you recommend uh, and which okay. banks would you recommend sure so basically provided you've got a, a local director Okay, so if you want to open a bank account and uh, there is no problem uh, with having, well, as much problem, uh, uh, 
it's not critical not to have, so to, it's fine to have all these seed investors or shareholders but you really got to have someone uk based and i would normally say have at least a group but obviously if you have a shareholder i'm sure he would be happy or she she would be happy to be director of the company so you need to have at least one local resident and if you have one uh yes be ready it will take a while your, your um, foreign uh, shareholders will be invited or might be invited for for an interview okay in the uk so uh, and they uh, not, normally they would need to have visas longer than six months we had a situation where we had guys from moscow and um, all fine that they have local resident uh, director uh, invited them to uh, that was hlbc <clears throat> early days when i just started with the business we were dealing with bank accounts then and they just asked us to come to translate you know so so we came and the bank you know all is ready all is wonderful they bought the book tickets they paid for accommodation imagine just to come to the bank and you know what happened Bank said oh your visa is less than six months we can't open the bank it comes up what did you tell us straight away you know why, when we were talking to you you be sent for all the documents including visas you didn't tell us and once actually they paid for from Moscow tickets, air tickets, accommodation, everything. They just refused to open because their visa was less than six months. That's crazy, but that's what uh, all I'm telling you. Uh, when you, you you are ready, I mean, it's fine to have, but you just need to make sure their visas are long term. They might be invited here, and uh, you make sure you've got someone local reason. Yeah, I mean, if I may add, um, uh, we're we're a, a company ourselves, and, and we have a board of directors which is split evenly between Russian and UK residents, six of each. Mm. And uh, we have a high street bank and uh, they're, they're quite reasonable. Um, although uh, every other year, I would say that they do a review uh, of the Russian directors and they, we have to send off the sort of passport details um, mm. again. Uh, and um, so they're quite thorough, but, but reasonable. Um, that said, we have quite a few members who have had issues and um, maybe because of their clients, I'm not sure, but um, on several occasions, despite having banked with a certain bank for, for, for many, many years, they've been told that they have uh, four months or, or sorry, less, two, two or three weeks to close, to move their um, yeah. bank account elsewhere with, with, with no um, explanation as to what the problem is. And uh, it becomes a real issue. And um it's quite it's quite a worry mm -hmm. but, um, I, I i assume as your name suggests you know russo bishi chamber uh, chamber of commerce so so they 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 would sort of anticipate that it's somehow connected with russia so i, I assume it would be easier for you out isn't it rather than for anyone else you know <laughs> so there is an expulsion yeah. here there would be some russians <laughs> yes yes yeah exactly yeah but i i, I th yes yeah uh, but, but the, I think what we find is that the frustrating thing is the banks give no explanation and uh, uh, it's impossible to appeal the decision. And, oh, um, and absolutely. Once they yeah. send you, uh, maybe I just say, our client say, Luda, one, I've got a letter. What do I do next? Do, do I have a chance to cancel? Just look for a new bank account immediately. You know, just chance is pretty much you know uh one percent <laughs> yeah so so but you you really don't don't have my chance just straight away look for something else yeah 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 okay we have uh, time for one more question and we have one it's quite specific so uh it may be something you you decide to take offline but i'll ask it anyways um and it asks if uh, an llp one of the partners works and pays tax in cyprus and the other has an insur insurance national banking number I'm guessing working in the UK with a salary of around hundred thousand pounds how are the taxes paid on dividends for each person in the LLP so I suppose the uh, jurisdiction okay, LLP remember they don't have dividends so okay so, so so, so what are some of the do you mean profit share profits right because in LLP they have they it's a, it's a limited company that's got profits so generally okay let me so if you create a LLP if I understand the, the question correctly yeah. and you work you don't you're not tax resident in the UK you I, I think it both I, I think the the point is that uh, 
uh, one one director or one partner is in registered in Cyprus, the other is in in the UK. H how are the taxes uh, decided? It, I, it I suppose. depends on their re tax residency position. Okay, mm -hmm. I would have a look. Uh, do you live? I mean, first one easy one, easy test. Half a year. Where do you live in Cyprus or the UK? Are you tax resident in the UK or Cyprus? I would determine where the first tax residents are. Okay, and then if it is UK resident, but obviously that's uh, I've just said sole trader tax. Taxes, income tax, national insurance plus two and four. Okay, if uh, you live in Cy, if a client uh, lives in Cyprus, let's say the other client, that's fine. That could be totally different in Cyprus. That means they don't pay anything. Okay, they just because they work from Cyprus, they tell you remember they tax the sole traders, and then uh, this uh, pro profit share profit is subject to uh, ta ta taxation in Cyprus. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Lydia. To be honest, the question wasn't one hundred percent clear. So Olga, if, yeah. So that... if, if 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 I if I answered something like no, that's not what I was asking. Please, by all means, do email it to me. That's Luda dot Binland at schoolgetaccounts.co.uk. I will be happy to take any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you right. once again, Alpha James. Yeah. I really appreciate for for inviting me here. As I said, it's such an honor, and it's lovely to see you. You know, in person. I'm I'm really pleased to see you. Thank yeah. you very much for everything. Yeah. Thank you and thank you everyone at this. Um, thank you very much for, for such a good turnaround. I really appreciate supporting and coming and listening to me. Um, if, if, I, if I can be any help, please do let me know. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That, thank you again, Luda. That was fantastic. And, and thank you to the audience for joining us today. Um, please join us for our next event, which actually happens to be tonight. Um, if you have time or you can take another one, it starts at seven o'clock UK time, 10 o'clock Moscow time. Um, it's actually an interview with the British Hollywood star Ralph Fiennes, um, who is actually a great fan of Russian theatre and cinema. And uh, He's doing an exclusive uh, interview for Classica. Uh, um, a partner organization. Details are on our website. Uh, and if you're interested in that, please sign up. It should be a fascinating interview by um, a, a global star. Anyways, thank you all very much. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to you joining on our next webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Luda. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.